Okay, welcome guys to week 52. This is your news update. So we've got some stock market news, we've got some cryptocurrency news, some gold and silver news. And basically I'm gonna be running through some of my favorite charts. So these are the charts that I look at regularly um, because in 2020, there's some crazy times going on. Um, so let's get straight to it. So the first chart we're gonna look at and it's from the Federal Reserve website. And we're looking at currency in circulation. So as you can see, this goes back to 1920 and goes all the way to 2020. And what you'll notice is that for all this period of time, the time it took to get to one trillion dollars in circulation was in 2012. So that's 2012 years um, it took civilization, well, the US, to get to one trillion dollars. Then it only took about eight years to get to two trillion dollars. Now, if we look at what's happened recently, we can see lessons from the Fed's three trillion money printing. So in the last couple of months, the Fed has printed three trillion dollars, which is just crazy. Considering it took 2012 years to print one trillion, it took nine years, eight years to print another trillion, and then a couple of months to print three more trillion. So this will be going literally off the chart. Next up to look at is the overall stock market. So like a, a global big picture. So we look at like people like Warren Buffett because um, they're very, very successful investors. So this chart is known as the Buffett indicator. So what we're looking at is the Wiltshire 5000, which is pretty much the whole stock market in the US. And then they divide it by GDP. So gross domestic product, and it gives you a ratio. Um, bit of background into this chart, this is the first time we've looked at it. So the Buffett indicator, it divides the total value of traded stocks by quarterly GDP. It's, uh, I think he's quoted, Warren Buffett's quoted to have said, it is probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. And Buffett wrote that in Fortune magazine, I think in 2001. So going back to the chart, uh, what does this chart say? Um, so you can see the stock market, it basically says whether the stock market's overvalued or undervalued. So we can see, and it goes, this particular chart goes back to 1975. Um, so it was saying that stocks in 1975 were pretty much undervalued. So this is a really good time to buy. Um, obviously it crossed over the mean in 1996. This led up to the dot-com bubble, which peaked out in the year 2000. So you can see it peaked out in the year 2000 at 1.2 of GDP, and then crashed, massive stock market crash, went all the way down to about 0.7. Uh, the next 10 years was a big run up to the 2008 global crisis. Um, as we know, one of the uh, biggest crises. It then crashed all the way down, stocks crashed um, and it sat down at about 0.5. Then we've had a huge run up in the last 10 years. Had this massive run up and this is where we're at right now. So this is higher than the dot-com bubble right now, and it's higher, much higher than the 2008 crisis. So this is why Warren Buffett wasn't buying stocks, because he's been criticized recently, because all Warren Buffett's done is um, just sold. He's actually sold some airline stocks, but he hasn't been buying, even though there was a crash. So if we take a look at the Dow Jones, we can see what happened. Um, so everything was going fine. Obviously the virus hit 
and there was a big, about a 30% drop. Uh, normally when there's big drops, this is when the big boys like to buy and accumulate, but Warren Buffett didn't. Um, he actually hasn't done anything. He's just been sitting on cash. And the stock market has since recovered um, um, a lot of the losses. However, this is one of the things that Warren Buffett's looking at is this um, Buffett indicator, which says that stocks are still really overvalued, which is probably why he's sitting on the fence. So the question is, where are stocks going now? Is he gonna be setting new all-time highs or is there a big crash coming? So this next chart is a cycle of a bubble. So this is a pattern that repeats in human history again and again and again and again. So it's, it's good to be really familiar with this. Uh, let me walk you through the chart. So at the bottom, we've got this stealth phase followed by an awareness stage, followed by a little bear trap. Then we have the mania phase, which is the huge blow off. Um, sorry, followed by then the blow off phase which then sends it crashing down through capitulation and into despair. On the top side, in this stealth phase, this is where the smart money is joining things. Have the awareness phase, normally when your institutional investors are getting on board. Through the mania phase, this is when the general public all start to rush in and everything's going higher and people just want more, more, more. Um, followed by the blow off phase, um, and yeah, this is the fear, the panic, the selling, and everything comes crashing down. So this has happened in stocks again and again and again. It's happened um, in more recently in Bitcoin, as you can see. So from what I can see, it's where are we on this chart? And from what I can see, we're either in two places. We're either setting a new stealth phase where the Fed is just injecting money, keeping the markets up, and we're gonna be going into a brand new phase, or we're, we're here, which is the bull trap. So there's, we had the big drop, we've had this big comeback, and there's a lot of people saying that we're now due a big crash. So <clears throat> we could be in either, um, normally these people would be right if, the, if it was a totally free market, um, there probably should be a massive crash. The economy is in an absolutely terrible place. However, there is the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell, and he is just printing and printing and printing, which as he's intervening could stop this happening and set a new run. So truth, Truth is nobody really fully knows exactly what's gonna happen right now. So you kinda of need to be positioned that if, if there is a new, new cycle, you've got some money in stocks. However, if it comes crashing down, just don't be overexposed. Next up, we're looking at the cryptocurrency markets. So a macro big picture view. Uh, this is pretty much what's happened in the last 10 years. So you can see uh, not a lot happened um, for, the, for, for a long time. There was this huge bubble mania which happened in 2018. And then we spent the last two years as it's been deflating and popping. Um, maybe this was the bottom um, and it's now setting up new grounds. Um, I'm of the belief that I think there is gonna be another run in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And this is, the, this is the chart that I'm looking at. So this is called the stock to flow model. And if it's correct, then Bitcoin could be going up 10, well, a thousand percent from here over the next one to two years, which it would be really exciting. So let me show you the methodology of this chart. Stock to flow ratios are used to evaluate the current stock of a commodity against the flow of new production. That's essentially what it is. Um, so these colors here are when the Bitcoin halving events have been happening. So you can see there was a Bitcoin halving here and it led to a massive run up. There was a Bitcoin halving event 
here and it led to a massive run up and then we've just had another Bitcoin halving event. So this chart is saying that if it does what it's done for the last 10 years, there were, then we're on the precipice of going up from, I think it's around $9,000 now, and it'll be going up all the way up to a hundred, well, $92,000 where and then it'll be going sideways for roughly 3 to 4 years and then pushing up to a million. Um so this is a really exciting chart and I will come back to this again um because it's very useful. Um but this is basically saying we're on the precipice of another big run in cryptocurrency. Looking at gold uh, so gold hasn't really done that much this week. Um, it's had a very good year so far, but this week it's kind of just uh, slowly climbed. I'll um, probably just talk about the big picture for now. So you can see this is gold, 20-year uh, gold measured in US dollars, and it's very close to hitting all-time highs. One of the interesting things is, uh, is that if you look in other currencies, so let's look at the, the British pound, gold has already set all-time highs. And if you look at the euro, gold has already set all-time highs. And let's look at one more, maybe the Aussie dollar. Gold has already set all-time highs. So it's actually only the US dollar where it, it hasn't um, been able to beat its 2012 highs. But I think that's going to be breaking through um, pretty soon. One of the more interesting things to look at right now is the gold silver ratio. So this is how many silver ounces can buy one ounce of gold. Uh, and again, um, going back about 20 years, this kind of measures um, what's overvalued and undervalued. So you can see it kind of goes from overvalued to undervalued to overvalued to undervalued. This is silver, that is. Um, and gold has obviously had a big run up and the gold silver ratio peaked out at like one, I think close to 115, which is the highest it's ever been, ever. Which, may, which basically says that silver is really undervalued. So out of gold and silver, silver is probably the best bet right now because as you can see, this always reverts. So this indicates that silver is due to be going up. Okay, and to finish up, I'm just gonna do something a bit fun and we're gonna be looking at some different asset classes and how they have done so far in 2020. So if you've had money in these asset classes, um, this is how they've done so far. We'll be looking at stocks, because um, we can't look at every single stock. Um, I'm just gonna take the Dow, so it's pretty much the American stock market. We're gonna look at Bitcoin, we're gonna look at Ethereum, we're gonna look at gold, we're gonna look at silver, and then we're gonna look at cash. So if you just left your money in cash, what would, it, what would that have done? So, the number one winner so far in 2020 goes to Ethereum, cryptocurrencies number two. And this is up 73% for the year. Next up, in second place, we have Bitcoin. If you'd have owned Bitcoin at the start of the year, it's now up 28%. Next up, gold everybody's favorite yellow metal and gold's had a really good year this year and it's up 15 percent next up silver and silver is actually down one percent this year almost um, break even next up we have cash so i've put cash at negative three percent because due to inflation uh, you're Cash is always losing about 3% every year. So if you just kept money in the bank and done nothing, your money would be down 3%. And finally, the actual biggest loser of the year so far is stocks. So the American stock market, uh, the Dow, is actually still down 9%. And this is pretty much how it looks. So you can see 
Um, so far, year to date, it is cryptocurrency that is doing the best, followed by gold and silver, um, followed by cash, and then yeah, money in the stock market um, is the biggest loser on this chart. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the news. Um, we will be doing this weekly. So just left to say, if you found anything useful in this video, then click that like button, because that would be really much appreciated. Um, it's the little button below this video. If you would like to subscribe, if you don't wanna miss any of these news updates that I'll be doing, then click the subscribe button. And if you've got any questions and comments, then post them below this video now, and we'll see you in next week's video. Thank you.